This webinar, Hypertension Diagnosis and Management 2021, is a project of the Utah Million Hearts Coalition, sponsored by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and composed of multiple healthcare organizations throughout the state of Utah. Continuing medical education credits are available for completing this webinar. Please watch parts one to four and complete the evaluation in the description below to be eligible for these credits. The objectives of part one of this webinar are to recognize the critical contributions made by hypertension to global death and disability, to cardiovascular disease, renal disease, dementia, and to healthcare expenses in the United States. The Centers for Disease Control Million Hearts Initiative 2017 to 2022 predicts there will be 16 million cardiovascular disease events in the United States between 2017 and 2022. And as its goal hopes to prevent 1 million of these cardiovascular disease events by the year 2022. A key component of this initiative is to attain an 80% or greater hypertension control rate below 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury. But the ugly truth in 2017-2018, the most recent year for which we have accurate hypertension control rate data, is that only 44% of U.S. hypertensive persons were controlled below 140 over 90 compared to 54% in the year 2013-2014, and only 19% were controlled below 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury. The new blood pressure target set by the American College of Cardiology American Heart Association in late 2017. Additionally, hypertension-related mortality has also increased from 2011 through 2018 in persons age 55 and older. The goal of this webinar is to provide guidance to help achieve an 80% hypertension control rate below 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury and at least a 50% control rate below 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury by the year 2022. This slide from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey shows the continuous improvement in hypertension control rate below 140 over 90 from only 35% in the year 1999-2000 to 54% in the year 2013-2014. But this improvement is followed by a decrease in control rate to just 48% in the year 2015-2016, and another decrease to just 44% in the year 2017-2018. The reasons for this decline are not certain, but may include increasing obesity rates and increasing health care disparities with disadvantaged populations. Hypertension is the leading global risk factor for death and disability and has been termed the largest epidemic ever known to mankind. 1.1 billion persons worldwide now have hypertension, defined as a blood pressure of 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury or higher. Hypertension is responsible for at least 10 million deaths per year on a global basis, and as seen on the next slide, has a profound impact on health and healthcare costs. The World Hypertension League in 2020 termed the consequences of hypertension as a, quote, global crisis with pandemic proportions that needs a commensurate and coordinated global response to its immense health and socioeconomic burden. Hypertension is responsible for 60% of strokes, 55% of all coronary artery disease events, and 25% of myocardial infarctions, 50% of heart failure, 50% of chronic kidney disease, and 30% of end-stage renal disease, 25% of premature deaths, and 15% of cases of atrial fibrillation. Hypertension increases the risk two to three-fold for valvular heart disease, specifically aortic stenosis and aortic and mitral regurgitation. Of great importance to all of us, 
Hypertension is responsible for at least 5% of dementia, and the onset of hypertension in persons aged 30 to 50 years increases their lifetime dementia risk by 41%. In the United States, hypertension is responsible for 1,000 deaths each day, reduces average lifespan by at least five years. Hypertension costs at least $130 billion per year in the United States, with an average cost per person of $2,000 per year. As demonstrated in the Framingham Heart Study, in Western societies, irrespective of whether your starting diastolic blood pressure level at age 30 is 70 millimeters of mercury or 85 millimeters of mercury, diastolic blood pressure rises progressively until about age 55 and then decreases progressively as age increases. In contrast, irrespective of whether your starting systolic blood pressure level at age 30 is 110 millimeters of mercury or 135 millimeters of mercury, there is a continuous progressive increase in systolic blood pressure with advancing age. This phenomena is due to progressive stiffening of the arteries with age for both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. In contrast, among the primitive Yanomami Amerindians of the Venezuela rainforest, whose lifestyle includes very low sodium, no processed foods, absent obesity, high physical activity, and an absence of air pollution, neither systolic nor diastolic blood pressure increase with age. Age-related changes in blood pressure appear to be a phenomena caused by the lifestyle of Western societies. A systematic review of 61 prospective observational studies with more than 12 million patient years of data found a continuous log linear association between systolic blood pressure and both coronary heart disease and stroke mortality. And this was present in all age groups from the 40 to 49 year olds all the way to the 80 to 89 year olds. But note that this association begins not at a systolic blood pressure of 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury, but instead begins at a systolic blood pressure of just 115 millimeters of mercury, such that every subsequent two millimeter increase in systolic blood pressure above 115 millimeters of mercury increases stroke and myocardial infarction death by 10% and 7% respectively. However, more recent data from the multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis in the United States has found that atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk actually begins to increase at a systolic blood pressure of just 90 millimeters of mercury in persons who are free of all other cardiovascular disease risk factors. Beginning at this systolic blood pressure of 90 millimeters of mercury, each 10 millimeter increase in systolic blood pressure thereafter increases cardiovascular risk by 53%. Compared to a systolic blood pressure of 90 to 99 millimeters of mercury, a systolic blood pressure of just 120 to 129 millimeters of mercury increases cardiovascular risk by 458%. Therefore, primordial prevention of this rise in systolic blood pressure with advancing age is essential. Increasing levels of both systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure, indicated by the increasing Z-scores on the horizontal axis, increase cardiovascular risk, noted on the vertical axis, as seen on this slide of 1.3 million Northern California adults followed for eight years. However, note that cardiovascular risk rises more steeply with increasing systolic blood pressure than it does with increasing diastolic blood pressure.